Hey, ready for some Chinese food? Let's go. Good morning, we are at London's Chinatown. I believe you could tell from the red lantern hanging up top and the crowd is insane. There's quite a lot of people, but trust me guys, at night, it's even crazier. Which is why we are here during the daytime. This is the place where you can find all things that are related to Chinese. We have got different kinds of street foods, snacks, dim sum. Chinese bakery, traditional Chinese medicine. Grocery stores. Wow, look at the team over there. They are in the professional league. <laughs> Or you can eat Chinese buffets and of course the most popular Cantonese roast or more specifically roast duck what we call the London roast duck The London roast duck is so famous to the point where at least among the Chinese community back home when we talk about roast duck they're like oh you gotta try roast duck in London it's really good you gotta try it in Chinatown and I believe the most famous is called Four Seasons Now, this is not our first visit to Chinatown because being Chinese Obviously, we have been here a few times. I have tried Four Seasons and I have tried another one that is also pretty popular. I will bring you to what I personally think serves the best London Rose Duck in Chinatown. But before that, let us start off with something steaming hot because I don't want to start off straight with some greasy foods. Let's grab some pow. We are at Ban House, Ban Yok Tao Ji Po, apparently very well known for their pao, especially their custard bun, Lai Wong Bao, and pork bun. Siu Zap Ji Lam Bao, I'm sorry I didn't look it up because it's not my usual Sha Siu Bao. Anyway, let's head in. Alright guys, seated in the shop and we've got two bao. One is the custard bun, we call it a lai wong bao and the other is a pork bun. So let's start with the lai wong bao because this custardy you should eat it when it's hot. Mm. It's good, it's proper. It's not a lai wong bao, no. <laughs> it's authentic, uh, what I'm saying. Mm. The bun is soft, it's chewy, it's got a nice bounce as well. And the custard within is sweet, a little bit of greetiness which I really like, it's a nice texture. A little bit of saltiness. It's pretty watery though. I'm more accustomed to a saucy base one. But I like the fact that they give you this paper just in case the custard drips all over the place. Okay, my turn. This is BBQ pork bun. Obviously, it's a pork bun. The bun texture is as good as the custard bun. The pork is mixture between lean and fatty. And this is not the type of our Malaysian char siu bao, the sweet type. It feels like it's a stir fried pork with some chili, but the spicy level is very mild. There's some inconsistencies. Uh. The bao scene is more mushy, it's a little more chewy. The custard was done really well though, I'll be honest. The custard is good. It's alright. That was a warming meal, but I'm not ready for a roast duck just yet. Let's see what street food we could find. Alright, spot number two, and we are having some Jianbin Guozi, which is Chinese crabs. And we are in this shop called Lin Lin Crabs. It's a husband and wife thing, and you can see the lady and the husband busy making the crabs for the people who are queuing. They start off by putting a thin layer of batter, and then they break two eggs, spread them evenly across that flour batter, and then they sprinkle some spring onions, some coriander on top, let it set, and they flip it around, butter it with hoisin sauce and they place whatever ingredients you require. We got some sausage, some fried fritters, and some fried dough. And after it's done, they fold it up and turn it into this magnificent beauty. Oh, 
crab is soft, a little bit of chew. You could taste the egginess with the spreader, the eggs across the crab. And the coriander, the spring onion, they bring their own fragrance that lifts the flavor of this crab. And within, you've got that still sort of moderately crispy flavor. Uh, you know, because it's wrapped and then there's condensation, so obviously it's not as crispy. The flavor is predominantly hoisin sauce uh, with some spiciness. It's very simple, but it's pretty delicious. Mm, mm. For Malaysians, the skin with the egg, it tastes like roti telo. Okay, let's grab a bite of the sausage. It's a very simple sausage. I mean, it's a low level sausage, but uh, the key point is in the fragrance of the eggs, the flavor of the hoisin sauce. The sausage is just there for the texture, you know, the very cheap frankfurters that you get from Sainsbury's. It's roughly there. Mm. I know it's a nice texture. They're a bit crisp, chewy. Very mild oil fragrance. My favorite is still the hoisin sauce. I think I'll say very simple snack. But I think for Chinese, right? It's the flavor that we might crave when we're in London. So yeah, I'll still say I enjoyed it very much. Alright, Starbucks food. I think we are ready for the roast duck now. Let's go! Alright guys, we are sitting at Golden Mine restaurant called Tam San Lao and I've tried this, I've tried Four Seasons, I think this is better, it edges out Four Seasons. We will explain after we eat their duck. So let's see how they perform today. We have got over here the Cantonese Rose Duck. Correct me if I'm wrong, the way I understood it before I arrived at London is I thought London Rose Duck was slightly different from Cantonese Rose Duck. But as I got here to Chinatown, they told me that actually it's the same. It's basically Cantonese Rose Duck. You can smell the ingredients in there, it's spice, it's firm, and they have got this spice spice powder smell. That oil fragrance of the duck is crazy. Without further ado, let's try the duck first, see if the skin is still crispy. Mm. <laughs> skin is crisp. The meat is tender and bitey. Mm. Oil fragrance is very good. That rendered fat from the process of roasting. Mm. You can taste the innate gaminess of the duck in a good way. I'll call it duck sweetness even. Not so much of the spices. I think they're just there to bring up their complex flavor to draw out the natural sweetness of that duck. It's really umami. The key point lies in the oil fragrance. That rendered fat is insane. I don't know if the mic can pick this up, but it's a true crisp. The skin is crisp. And the meat, really, the umami is really good. Now let's talk a little bit about the difference between London Cantonese duck and, I guess, Malaysian Cantonese duck. The key in London is they use Gan San Gam, Silver Hill Farm, Irish duck basically. So they are generally fatter in fat content. And with good skill from a master roaster, when you roast the duck, the fat protects the meat of the duck. So the duck maintains its tender meat, its succulent meat. It doesn't go dry. And with the perfect roasting skills, the fat in the duck will render out and you get a piece of duck that is crispy, succulent, tender meat and not overly fatty. This is one of the key points of roast duck is it cannot get overly cloyed. The moment it gets cloyed, it's not very good. And I think Goma has found a pretty good balance here. The Sifu showed me there were certain parts where there was too much fat. He said, you gotta cut this off because it's gonna be koi. And I totally agree. And I think he is really dedicated to his craft. And this duck is a good duck. Okay guys, I gotta put a pause on the duck for a bit because we got another dish that we need to try out now. I've got a Xiongping, which is a chop siu together with siu, which means roast pork with barbecue pork. So let's try the roast pork first because I wanna know if the skin is still crispy. I really don't know if the mic can pick it out right. It's crispy. Very crispy. The meat is still tender. It's quite bitey. The skin is where all the flavour is at. The oil fragrance is all in the skin. It's very crispy. It's almost like a, like a cracker. It's crackling. Oh, it's good. I'm surprised. You see, it's doused in this sauce and it's been lying in the sauce for quite a while. It's 
skin is cracking. Mm. Mm. This piece is much better. The earlier piece, there is a hint of pockiness, not in a good way. But this piece is good. But let's try the sashi, which is basically honey barbecue pork. They glaze it with some honey as well, I think. Tasu is decent, it's bitey, a little bit tougher than what I've liked. Not that much of that. When you call matzap tasu, normally there's this flavor of honey that is quite present. This is not that present. Perhaps because I've had a really good version at Shang Palace in Paris. So yeah, there's a stuff contrast, but it's still decent though, don't get me wrong. Oh, it's quite tough. Let me go back to the road, luck. Alright guys, this is rice for one person. This is a bowl of rice. You know, it's actually a lot of rice. So if you come and you are not a big eater, get one person rice is enough for two or maybe even three. Oh! Mm. The sauce! Yeah, way! The sauce today is on point. The day when we try it, I'll be honest, duck was good, but the sauce was kind of too salty. It's like salty, just soy sauce salty. Today the mixture is good. It's still salty, but it's got a nice flavor of sweetness. I think it makes like a sweet soy sauce with, with their soy sauce and maybe some, some form of oil with it. Maybe it's a duck oil. And when you go with rice, Crazy good. Mm. Rice is good as well. I think they use jasmine rice. So it's got a just nice chew. You can see they're individually green. This is good. Okay hey guys, we are about maybe 5 minutes walk away from Chinatown and there's this Buns bun from. place Yeah, it's called Buns From Home <laughs> that we want to recommend to you guys because we tried it a couple of days ago Some good bread lah, basically Pastry rather, it's a good pastry So we got over here one of their signature which is the custard bun the and Vanilla custard Yeah, vanilla custard So I'm going to try this first because it's going to feed me because she doesn't really take pure vanilla Let's go <laughs> It's so big okay. Oh, yeah, I like it. It's not very milky. Castle is cool, it's creamy. The puff pastry has a nice baked fragrance. The texture is a little bit bready, so I guess that's why they call it buns from home. And I think they glazed it as well with some sugar, so it's a bit sweet. I'm not sure, I think I tasted some cinnamon as well. I don't know if they accidentally sprinkled some on or. Yeah, it's cinnamon. There's some cinnamon in the bun. I think the bun is glazed with cinnamon and sugar. And I think the base is really thin. So the cream is basically bursting out of the base. We gotta eat this quickly. <laughs> I gotta admit, not my best face. Eating face. But it's good lah. Yeah. I like the flavor. Mm, not overly sweet. Yeah. It's, it's very refreshing, surprising. Mm. I love this. This is good, guys. We have tried some bakeries in London. This is the one that I find really proper. It's like comparable to the ones you find in Paris. Yeah, this is proper guys. Really good. Alright, we're gonna keep the other one. I think it's a cheese with maybe raspberry and some biscuit crumbles. We're gonna keep that for supper. Uh, let's talk a bit about plating time. The first spot, bun house. I would say very decent buns, surprisingly. The texture is nice, especially for that custard bun. Soft, bouncy. Custard is a little bit watery, but it's got a nice flavor and nice greasiness within as well. The pork bun is a little bit mushy. There's some inconsistencies there. And the flavor is fine, but it's not overly exciting in a way. And with that taken into consideration, I'll say Bun House scores an honorable mention on the gourmet plate, which means it is a pretty decent bun place. 
In fact, I would say the custard bun is pretty good. Strongly suggest eat it when it's hot. Yeah, that is true. You know, it will turn a little bit cloy. Mm. So if you are in London Chinatown, definitely try out Bun House for their custard buns. Mm. Custard buns are pretty good. Okay, spot number two, Lin Lin Crabs. Jian Bing Guozi. Yeah, Jian Bing is a familiar flavor uh, mm-hmm. for us Chinese. And aside from the egginess, which is really good, the rest of the stuff did feel a little too simple. Like you don't taste the flavor in the sausage, not much anyway. The fritters lacks quite a bit of the fragrance. Yeah. The Yu Tiao is also, it needs more fragrance, I swear that way. So it's a really simple product that if you are Chinese and you are craving maybe flavor from home, yeah, then, then you'll enjoy it like, like we enjoy it very much. Yeah. yeah. So taking all this into consideration, I would say, unfortunately, Lin Lin Crab scores a zero on the gourmet plate. It doesn't mean it's not good. It's just very, very, very simple. It's all right. Mm. It's not bad. Really, it's not bad. Yeah, you still enjoy it. Yeah, I actually really enjoy it. And I might buy it again, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. The third spot, which is the key point for this vlog, the roast meats from Go Mine Restaurant. Yep. For today, the roast duck is on point. I think the key point is it's got a crisp enough skin. Because Cantonese duck is not like super crispy where it's like Peking duck. But it still needs that crisp which they have. Oil fragrance is ridiculously good today. The duck is umami that's got a good amount of sweetness from the duck. And the sauce is well balanced today. I'll be honest, the last time we came, the duck was good. But the sauce was... It was one dimension and very salty. Yeah. It was a lousy sauce the last time we came. Today, it was on point. It was sweet, it was salty, but it's good enough when you put it on your rice. Yeah. There's a umami. Yeah, the duck is good lah, basically. Yeah. It's a good enough duck. Mm. So ultimately, I think it is a really good Cantonese roast duck. Is this the best Cantonese roast duck we have had? It's not, but it's pretty up there. Yeah. Maybe the only downside to this roast duck now is the breast. Because I personally think for perfect Cantonese roast duck, you look at the duck breast, it has to be tender, it has to be succulent, with crisp skin, mm. and it shouldn't be mushy. And in this case, Goldmine, unfortunately, the, the duck meat around the breast area is a little mushy, which we find in most Cantonese ducks, I'll be very honest. But we did try a variant from Shishan Hunter in Singapore, where the London roast duck has no mushiness. Mm. Yeah, I think that is like the perfect one. La. That is the best that we have tried today. But Goldmine is really good as well. So let's look at their other roast meats, the Cha Siu and the Siu Yong. Alright, the roast pork, very crispy skin. Flavour is all on the skin, you can taste the five spice powder, which is very nice. I did taste a bit of bad porkiness, if I may, on the first piece, but aside from that, the rest are fine. So I think roast pork is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Char siu is decent. La. Yeah, the char siu is uh, yeah. very lean. <laughs> it's not just very lean, it's lean but it's not tender enough. It's in a way dry, and the honey flavour is not that pronounced. Mm. Okay, now we are at a point where I want to talk about Four Seasons in comparison mm. to Gold Mine. I think Goma is better because the duck generally edges out a little bit. Four Seasons is not bad either. Like the duck is umami, the skin is crisp, but we did come across a little bit of that duck hair. Mm. It's quite a bit lah. And then it's also more coy. The duck that we had was a lot fattier. I don't know is it because they didn't remove the really fatty parts or what. Mm. But yeah, it does get quite coy. Yeah. And very importantly, the rice is quite mushy lah from yeah. Four Seasons. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The way I'm going to score this is I'm going to just score it on roast duck. Because originally we only want to go for a roast duck, but I got greedy, so I got the roast meats as well. And taking only roast duck and rice into consideration, Go Mine scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate, which means it is some high quality roast duck with rice right there. I would say highly recommended if you are in London, come to Chinatown, try roast duck, preferably in Go Mine. Yep, really good roast duck. Yeah. It's good. But the first time we tried it was not this good though. So there could be some inconsistency issues, but it's common lah for shops like this. Okay, the fourth spot which we originally only wanted to use it for the ending. But I want to play it as well because it's really good. I would say overall it's really on par with what you can get in Paris. The better patisserie in Paris, in fact. And with that being said, buns from home scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate. Which means it's some high quality buns right there. Absolutely recommended are the tiramisu bun, the cinnamon bun and the vanilla bun. You gotta try it lah. I think it's really good. Yep. <laughs> That's it for our food vlog for the day. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. <laughs> if you have yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and, hit and hitting the, the notification the bell button. button. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Till we eat again next week in London. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.